the one thing that you preserve and you should preserve as a physician is the moment with the patient. This week was unusually quiet for trauma, which is uh, kind of remarkable. People are out more. I think people are, in general, excited about where we are in this community with COVID, where we are nationally with COVID. I think there's been a big, big change in direction, um, more acceptance of the vaccination. People have vaccinated. Uh, we, we're seeing the yeah, just. I don't know what the I don't know what the exact numbers are at my hospital here, but. The impact seems to have lessened. The daily affairs seem to have not not necessarily normalized, but come into a new normal that's proved to be somewhat acceptable. So um, this week also, it was uh, kind of nice to be quiet because a consultant of mine, who happens to be my best friend ever uh, since high school, we've been together, um, and uh, he he was in town working on one of his own research projects. Uh, he wanted to get some solitude, so he came to town and tucked into my lake cabin. So I got to have dinner with him and, and, and go over some a lot of high level things with him that have been, uh, that always proved to be productive. The week started out with a, a string of elective surgeries and that was really nice. The elective surgery schedule's picking up. I, I sort of devoted the last couple of years to really, really, really heavy on-call work and especially in the, in the last year with the, uh, with the COVID issue and, and, and the hospital needs. I, I devoted most of my time to the hospital work. But I have an elective practice as well, and that's been picking back up kindly, very nice. And um, so I did numerous elective surgeries this week at a surgery center, um, from artificial disc replacement in the neck to decompressing a nerve root to lumbar discectomy, um, interlaminar stabilization with coflex, these surgeries that are designed to decompress an affected nerve root or stabilize the spine. The artificial disc is really, really a, a, a nice one in the neck. You know, you've got a lot of motion in your neck, and when you herniate a disc in your neck, you can pinch a nerve and cause just, a ro just terrible pain and discomfort. And the loss of function is pretty dramatic. It happens in young people, and this happened to be a very young person who I, I know, and uh, she went on and had an artificial disc replacement in the neck this week and appears to be recovering well. There's a bit of excitement in the elective surgery front because uh, is part of that I push outpatient surgery pretty well. We, we've, been, we've been working on making all the surgeries we do in the spine less invasive. And to that uh, end, uh, this past weekend, I was in uh, Carlsbad getting trained on a new navigation system that we're installing in the surgery center, which is going to be awesome. It's just going to be phenomenal. It's, 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 it's going to be very, 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 I think it's going to be a great tool for me to make surgeries for you and your loved ones and friends much better. So more to come on that one. I had a couple of encounters, a couple of uh, consultations on, on, on call this week that really, really moved me about life. And they're almost two opposite situations. And they both, when I tell you the story of each of them, you know, it, it may seem like an obvious thing to do, but when you meet these people, when you actually, you know, the, when you're a physician, no matter how hard the work is, no matter how much administrative paperwork and the rules to follow to keep everything aligned and the constraints on your, your family life, your personal life, your professional life, I mean, and, and your body and your mind, that the one thing that you preserve and you should preserve as a physician is the moment with the patient because each encounter with the patient is pretty special and it could be a bad encounter, it can be a good encounter, it could be a, a fulfilling encounter, it could be a you know unfulfilling encounter, but it's an encounter. And you have this moment that nobody else can have. You have this, and it, it, it may last 15 seconds, it may last 15 minutes, it may last a heck of a lot longer than that. And it's, it's special and it's different and it's each one, it, each one is, is, is that way. And I, every time I walk into a room, whether it's in the emergency room, uh, the operating room, or my cl private clinic, I, you kind of keep that attitude, what am I about to do? Try to erase the slate, walk in, and, and see how it goes. And it, it, it makes it a lot more a lot more fun. So I had two of these this week that were pretty special. And uh, both came over the phone. First was a woman who's 76-year-old, a 76-year-old woman who came to the emergency room with some neurologic issues, and she was found to have a very large 
brain tumor. Now the brain tumor is in the right frontal lobe in her, which is a treatable area. Generally, there's many ways I can access that area and get that tumor out safely. The caveat here was that she had a history of cancer. It was probably metastatic, which, which would, uh, she was 76. She was ready to check out in her mind because she had lost her husband to cancer a year ago. She was depressed and this was a story that was told to me and she was ready to check out. Check out. So I had her slot, I, I, I did my usual and customary. I reserved a surgery slot for her and then, you know, kind of let, let her get worked up, cleared and everything. And, and, and I was told that, that, that she might just want to, you know, go to hospice and, and, and she was ready to check out. So I was okay with that. I mean, it seemed, yes, yeah, 76 years old, malignant brain tumor, questionable, you know, not, not, not sure what it is yet, but questionable expe uh, life expectancy. Um, there's some quality of life issues will come into play. And, uh, and, and she had, was alone and depressed and she wanted to go. So who's gonna get in her way of that? Well, I went to meet her and I was started to talk to her and I met her daughter and her son-in-law at the same time, and it was quite clear that the, the picture that I just described to you was much different than the person that I had met. My encounter with her right away was, was, it was in front of a very vibrant woman who just got the wind knocked out of her sail with, a, with, a, with a, the finding of a brain tumor. And this tumor, it wasn't only the tumor that she had, that was probably there for a little while. Uh, when I say a little while, I mean growing over months, a year. Um, um, and then she possibly had other lesions in her lung. These were metastatic. But what was, what was really affecting her from was not the, necessarily the tumor itself, but the, the reaction of the tumor. The straw that uh, broke the camel's back happened, and this tumor became um, irritated, inflamed, and the, the edema around it was much more remarkable than the, the tumor itself. So she, I had already given her some anti-inflammatory called Decadron to um, reduce the inflammation and, and, and her family and she both noticed an immediate improvement. So then the decision came, okay, she asked me, she said, can you give me something tonight to like take me away? And I said, well, you know, you know the answer to that and let's talk. Do you really want, you know, th this could be the end of your life. You could use this moment to check out. We could stop the Decadron. We could let the swelling continue, and I don't know for you what that process is gonna be like, because you're so vibrant, and in fact, you could walk out of here right now. Um, you've got lesions elsewhere in your body, you've got your daughter here, your son-in-law here. Why don't you guys talk about your quality of life, where you were, and assume for a moment that if I take this tumor out, which on a, you know, very likely, uh, it's very likely that I can take this tumor out for you, and bring you and, and let the swelling go down and bring you back to where you were six weeks ago. Is that a good enough place for you to be that you would want to have more time on this planet, on this earth, than, 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 um, than if you were to check out now and have this sort of unpredictable what's going to happen to you as your brain swells and your functions go away and all that. So I had to go to another surgery. They th were going to think about it and I was going to come back. Meanwhile, almost on the, on the, on the, on the very, at this very moment, I get another call, a consult from the emergency room, and the consult starts out as, I've got a 99-year-old woman down here, which right away, what happens if you're a neurosurgeon and you hear there's a 99-year-old woman down here? What are you calling me for, right? right? Well, I've got a 99-year-old woman down here who appears to have had a stroke and neurology's been called, but they'd like you to evaluate the patient. So I, I kind of, I, I know the ER doctor, and I kind of jokingly said, well, you know, whatever the question is regarding her, from me, the answer is no. Okay, because who's going to operate? I'm not going to operate on a 99-year-old woman, right? Well, I still went down to see her, and that was probably one of the most amazing visits I've had. I walk into the room, and there's this vibrant, and I say vibrant, I mean vibrant. I mean, this is this elegant, elegant speaking and appearing woman sitting just gracefully in a stretcher just like this sitting there she's weak on one arm she's weak in her left arm uh, she had a right-sided stroke she woke up with it her son is sitting next to her and i'm talking to her and she says hello doctor and she's just i mean f to have this level of uh, of conversation with her i mean uh, you, you don't often see that in people much younger than her but but she she was just vibrant right away so it was a delightful to speak with her 
she had a stroke and the stroke was not a major stroke. It wasn't going to likely kill her. Now, in a 99 year old person, you get them into an institution, whether it be a hospital, a nursing home, a rehab center, anything, they catch something, they get a complication, wow, it could be the end. So my advice to her was, look, you, this is this, you, you come into a hospital and, and I, I, let's keep everything into perspective. Right now, you've got great resources at home. You've got your son. You've got, I don't know who else is there, but, but, but you have, he, he wants you to go home. You want to go home. That's the goal here. We just need to get you, skirt you through this process, make sure there's, that you're, there's not something else wrong, and let you get out of here. And, and so it said, do no harm. In this case, it's the, the, the Hippocratic Oath. Do no harm, absolutely. But that was, that was delightful. So I went and did my surgery, went back to talk to the, uh, to the, the other family, and, and they decided to do the surgery. And it proved to be a good decision. The, the, uh, I, I did the surgery uh, two days ago, and um, I removed the tumor. We've got a great uh, system here. I mean, uh, this hospital uh, is, is, is phenomenal in terms of the ability to do brain surgery. We've got all the resources needed to do this. So um, all the skill sets were in place. The tumor came out. It proved to be a, a, a metastatic tumor. So um, it, um, the, the, she woke up promptly, intact, you know, headache and everything, but not, nothing, nothing unpredictable, nothing unexpected, I should say. And um, she went to the ICU standard for the night, and then the next morning she got an MRI of her brain that showed the tumor was gross totally removed. Now, when you gross totally remove a tumor, that means you removed everything you can see visibly and with imaging. But there might be a cell here or a cell there, and with m metastases, there's, there's other places in the body where they can't be seen possibly, or even in the brain where they might be seen. So if you're going to treat this, there'll be there'll be some adjuvant treatment, whether it's a chemotherapy or a radiation, something. So she wanted to go home day one. I said, look, you need to stay here for a couple of days. You did the surgery. There's a process. Two days, you're out of here, but I have to make sure you don't get pneumonia. I mean, something very treatable, no complication. And in fact, she is going to meet with the oncologist uh, this morning, as a matter of fact. Um, she and her daughter agreed for her to meet with the oncologist just to hear if there's something she could do for whatever this may be that may keep her her, her quality of life strong as she goes through this possible end of life process. So, so these weren't big, big, you know, like trauma surgeries that I'm used to on call and such. And for what, for some reason, this whole, this was a really cerebral week. I mean, as I said, I had my, 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 my friend and consultant here and we got to go over this 3.0 plan of things to come. I had this, this strong meeting with, uh, with uh, um, a navigation system, the future of, of, of spine surgery that I'm bringing to town here that we're going to you know, move forward with. And then these discussions that just have me thinking differently or reinforcing these beautiful thoughts I have about, about life. So it's been a great week. It's been a great week and you know, it's, it's Sunday. There's still what, just short of 24 hours ago till 7 a.m. Uh, tomorrow when I check out. Thanks for listening. Look forward to, uh, to, to, to more communications to come. Have a great week.